Sunday after Pentecost, I'm the Reverend Michael Tuttle here, often wandering, honorary assistant, here to be with you on this day. Reverend Paul is uh, participating in the wedding of his niece. So we thank and praise him on this morning. And the one and the only Kathy Tuttle is at the back, and could she please come forward with the children? Dear Lord, we thank you for all you have given us this day and always. We ask you to keep, to help us keep well and to heal those who are sick or suffering. We ask that you help us understand when we need to rest, but also to understand when we have to wake up a bit and act to help others. Once in a while, God, help shake us awake and help us work hard to make the world a better place. Help us dream dreams and make dreams come true. So your will is done on earth as in heaven. Through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Please rise for our children. Thank you. 
Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you, Almighty God. To you all our hearts are open, all desires are gone, and from you those secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may be perfectly you and worthy of the by your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. <coughs> The first lesson is written in the book of Isaiah, chapter 5, beginning at the first verse. Let me sing for my beloved my love song concerning his vineyard. My beloved had a vineyard on a very fertile hill. He dug it and cleared it for stones and planted it with choice vines. He built a watchtower in the midst of it, and he built a wine vat in it. He expected it to yield grapes, but it yielded wild grapes. And now, inhabitants of Jerusalem and people of Judah, judge between me and my vineyard. What more was there to do for my vineyard that I have not done in it? When I expected it to yield grapes, why did it yield wild grapes? And now I will tell you what I will do to my vineyard. I will remove its hay, and it shall be devoured. I will break down its wall and it shall be trampled down. I will make it a waste. It shall not be pruned or hoed, and it shall be overgrown with briars and thorns. I will also command the crops that they bring no pain, that they bring no rain upon it. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts 
is the host of Israel, and the people of Judah are as pleasant as they. He expected justice, but saw bloodshed, righteousness, but heard a cry. The word of the Lord. Thanks, man. Israel, leading Joseph like a flock. Shine forth. In the presence of Ephraim, Benjamin, and Manasseh. Restore us, O God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance. O Lord God of hosts, how long? How long will you be You have fed them with the bread of tears. You have made us the derision of our neighbors. Our enemies will ask us for it. Restore us, O God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. You have brought a vine out of Egypt. You prepared the ground for it. The mountains were covered by its shadow. The towers you stretched out its tendrils to the sea. Why have you broken down its walls? The wild boar of the forest has ravaged it. Turn now, O God of hosts, look down and behold and tend this vine. They burn it with fire like rubbish. Let your hand be upon the man of your right hand. And so that we will never turn away from you. Restore us, O Lord, God of hosts. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, now. The second lesson is written in the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, beginning at the 29th verse. By faith, the people passed through the Red Sea as if it were dry land. But when the Egyptians attempted to do so, they were drowned. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell after they had been encircled for seven days. By faith, Rehab the prostitute did not perish with those who were disobedient because she had received the spies in peace. And what more should I say? For time has failed me to tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, of David, and Samuel and the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdoms, administered justice, obtained promises, shut the mouths of lions, quenched raging fire, escaped the edge of the sword, won strength out of weakness, became mighty in the war, put foreign armies to flight. Women received their dead by resurrection, others were tortured, refusing to accept release in order to obtain a better resurrection. Others suffered mocking and flogging, and even chains and imprisonment. They were stoned to death, they were sawn in two, they were killed by the sword, and they went about the world, they went about in skins of sheep and goats, destitute, persecuted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and mountains, and in caves and holes in the ground. Yet all these, so that they were commended for their faith, did not receive what was promised, since God had provided something better so that they would not, without us, be made perfect. <coughs> Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, 
Let us also lay aside every weight and sin that clings so closely, and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who for the sake of the joy that was set before him endured the cross, disregarding the shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. The word of the Lord. Jesus also said to the crowds, When you see a cloud rising in the west, you immediately say, Is it going to rain? And so it happens. And when you see the south wind blowing, you say, There will be scorching heat. And it happens. You hypocrites, you know how to interpret the appearance of earth and sky. But why do you not know how to interpret the present time? The Gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise, Praise to you, Jesus Christ. Come, O Holy. 
Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of thy faithful people. Kindle in them, in their very hearts, thy love. Amen. Please be seated. Well, now in the vineyards of Nova Scotia, they're getting closer to the time of the harvest. It comes somewhere near the end of August, the very first grapes are coming. Petite Milo is the first, the sparkling wines. And then comes Tidal Bay, our own vintage of grape in Nova Scotia that makes the white, cool, refreshing wine that's good with seafood. The website of the Nova Scotia Wine Growers Association says everything worthwhile is probably not easy. And so for six months they've been working away to move towards this harvest. And you hear in our text from Isaiah this morning, the fifth chapter that was read to us, we hear of God lovingly creating a vineyard. God sings the song of the vineyard in joy initially. God has created it in a way that is to be beautiful and fruitful for us to yield delights on a slope with the best boughs a wine vat has been prepared and fortifications are put up around it to ensure that it is not ravaged or attacked. God says, what more could I have done? And yet, and yet, wild grapes, sour grapes come. Grapes that are not edible. Why is that? Well, in the very last line of our text from Isaiah, God speaks of human violence and injustice as being the root cause. In fact, the verses will go on through the famous seven woes of Isaiah, where with farmer analogies, we have everything individual and societal mixed together. Pride and greed of the individual are at one with societal injustice. And all of those things have disturbed God's beautiful order in the vineyard. Now, I should say, for those of you that are Isaiah fans, the motif of destruction due to human misdoings repeats through the poem, and it is poetry, it is songs and singing, as does a motif of hope and restoration, soaring hope and restoration in the book of Isaiah will come. But perhaps on this day, for this morning, just take a minute as a modern person to let yourself be a little disturbed <laughs> by the imagery of Isaiah. I think that, you know, just think of food for a minute. Many of us do hopefully take a second to say grace for what God has created. We say grace. And yet do we fully understand or see the beauty and the greatness of what has been created for us and what we eat? I read a poem. I came across it as I was pondering Isaiah. It's called Prayer After Eating by Wendell Berry, a poet, a man of faith, an environmentalist. And Wendell said in his poem and his grace, I have taken in the light that quickens eye and leaf. May my brain be bright with praise of what I eat in this brief blaze of motion and thought. 
may I be worthy of what I eat. And the modern poet then had me as disturbed as Isaiah when I think, how often do I give praise to God for the order that God has created in? Am I worthy of my meat? We easily shrink away from and neglect our appreciation of God's beautiful universe that God has made. Perhaps we know the alternative isn't easy, and the alternative and the solution that is presented to us this morning, both in our epistle and our gospel, is faith. The book of Hebrews, this chapter famously sometimes is called the all-star lineup of faith. <laughs> All the great prophets are mentioned. A few of them not so well known. Gideon's name comes up. Rahab's name comes up. Gideon, who famously took 300 valiant warriors against thousands and was triumphant. Rahab, who sheltered those who came from Israel, the spies, in her home. At the time, it probably was a little bit of a wacky idea to do those things. But something stirred within them, some faith, some disturbance stirred within them that gave them the faith to do these things. And in retrospect, of course, it was God's will and way that it would work out well. The foes were conquered and the barriers were overcome. Nothing worthwhile comes easily. <laughs> Going back to our original comment from the winemakers, the way of faith is not always easy or even necessarily tranquil. And here we move to maybe an adjective rather than a noun, which is Jesus' story of disturbance, disturbed faith. He wants our disordered veneer to come back into order. He seems frustrated we are failing to act to counter the obvious disorder. And Jesus cries out in our gospel today, I came to bring fire to the earth. And how, my friends, I wish it were already kindled. <laughs> there are times to rest as we pray for the children. And there are times to act. Sometimes it's not easy. Sometimes it's disruptive. Those things that nag at you individually, that person in the hospital, that issue that you are irritated about, may be the very things that you are disturbed to act upon, even when it's against the odds. I think this morning, probably one of the greatest texts in modern times about this notion was Martin Luther King's famous letter from Birmingham Jail, which he wrote in the 1960s to the, the, the eight clergy, <laughs> including two Anglicans, I'm sorry to say, who had said, now this march that you're planning to fight to end segregationist policies in Birmingham, you just need to slow down, take some time, you know, give the new city government the time to work on this. And Martin Luther King in jail for his actions wrote a famous 7,000 word <laughs> reply, which became a book. And he said, yes, there are times to rest, but there are times where time is something that we are called to act upon and act with, to be disturbed and to move. 
Human progress doesn't roll on the wheels of inevitability, he said, but through the tireless effort of people willing to be co-workers of God. How many people in Halifax have lost patience and felt irritated with the homeless? Why don't they just move out of that part? How many of us, though, have asked ourselves, if disturbed by something or irritated by it, what can we do with this to reorder, to bring back God's vineyard, to assist those that are in dire straits? The kindling that Jesus speaks of, the kindling is what he asks of us may require self-questioning and self-dying in Christ-like fashion. Our Lord says our faith may be disturbing at times. However, brothers and sisters, take courage. <laughs> Did you hear our song, the psalmist cry, Restore us, God, make your face shine upon us that we may be saved. Imagine yourself, I would ask you, as a Nova Scotia grape, <laughs> and that sun shining down upon you is Christ's light, filling you and renewing you with the Holy Spirit, making you eager to be a disturber. No, you are capable of taking faithful steps to remake God's garden, Accept that this journey is disturbing and not always easy. And remember, in this short life, as Barry put it, this brief blaze of motion and thought, our potential is to be succulent and sweet with God's grace and to become wine alongside our Lord poured out in service of him. Amen. Please rise to sing our faith. <coughs>
A music prelude before the service this morning was to have been performed by Adriel Driver, but yesterday she told me with great regret that she would not be able to do it because Livia Driver is in the IWK for the weekend with um, an infection, but she is recovering with the help of antibiotics. So we pray for a speedy recovery for, for her. The uh, biddings you'll find on the back of the, this morning's leaflet if you'd like to follow along. We give, you, we give special thanks this week for those called to political office at the municipal, provincial, and national levels in our country and around the world. May we encourage them in their sacrifices and call them to account when cynicism and corruption creep in. May we attend to the political challenges in our neighborhoods, vigilant in challenging social media sensationalism and well informed in our responses to world affairs. Among our global Anglican communion of churches, we give thanks for churches around the globe, presided over by the Archbishop of Canterbury. Among them, the Anglican Church of Bermuda, the Church of Ceylon in Sri Lanka, the Parish of the Falkland Islands, the Lusitanian Catholic Apostolic Evangelical Church in Portugal, and the Spanish Reformed Episcopal Church. And we pray that they may be a blessing to and draw strength from their neighboring Christian churches as they worship and reach out to their wider communities. In our Halifax community of churches, we give thanks this week for the Evangelical Lutheran Church of the Resurrection, St. Antonio's Antiochian Orthodox Church, St. Mark's Anglican Church, Faith City Pentecostal Church, and St. Teresa's Roman Catholic Church. In our diocesan cycle of prayer this week, we give thanks for the people, lay leaders, and wardens of St. John's Wolfville and their rector, Nicole Uzans. Honorary Assistant Bruce Matthew and retired Deacon Anne Watson. At St. James in Kentville, we give thanks for that parish and their rector Sherwin Cole. And in the parish of New Ross, we give thanks for Christ Church in New Ross, St. Cyprian's in Dalhousie, and St. Augustine's in the 40s. We give thanks for their respective church councils and their priest in charge, Tom Henderson. And we continue to give thanks for the gifts of all those in our St. Paul's Parish Cycle of Prayer, asking God's blessing this week on Kerry Goralski, Kathleen Hoy, Ella and Karina, Isaac Granger and Alison Kit Granger, Janine and Brian Hagerman, Christian and Liam Patrick, and Pamela and Patrick Hartling, Julia and Olivia. With confidence and trust, let us pray to the Lord, responding with, Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for justice, for Ukraine and Russia, Yemen and Saudi Arabia, the People's Republic of China and the United States of America, and for Muslims and Hindus in India. May the Lord lead us, the Church, to practice justice between strong and weak in Halifax. In your mercy, Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the rulers of the nations, east and west, 
north and south, for those who govern in democracies and autocracies, or in any intermediate form of governments, for those who, whatever their claims, brandish armies and missiles, planes and drones, may they do so in wisdom and humility. In your mercy, Lord, we are heard. Let us pray for the young, that we may protect them in their vulnerability, respect them in their growth, and support them in their aspirations. <coughs> in your mercy, Lord, we are heard. Let us pray for those who suffer in mind or body, and for us who are their hope, and for those who care for them with the healing arts. We pray that the Lord deliver them and keep them in his love. In your mercy, Lord, Lord in our prayer. Let us pray for all who are condemned to exile, prison, harsh treatment, or hard labor, for the sake of justice and truth, and for those sentenced rightly for crimes. We pray that we find the will and ways to support them all. In your mercy, Lord, 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 Lord. Lord God Almighty, Father and Mother of every family, against whom no, no door can be shut, Enter the homes of our city, we beseech thee, with the angel of thy presence, to hallow every person's home in the pureness and beauty of love. And by thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, born in a stable, move our hearts to hear the cry of the homeless and to convert all sad and bitter dwellings into households of dignity. In your mercy, Lord, we pray for those whom we love but see no longer, who have died but live in Christ. Rest eternal grant unto them, O Lord, and may light perpetual shine upon them. In your mercy, Lord, we pray this in the name of, the, of God. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Let us take a few seconds to prepare our hearts to confess our sins against God and against our neighbors. <clears throat> Almighty God, have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and bring you into, um, us into everlasting life, through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. And the peace of the Lord be always with you, and with my spirit. Amen. let us greet one another as we can.
Blessed are you, Lord God, forever and ever. All that is in heaven and earth is yours. 